Hello everybody, this is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe. Today, I wanted to kick off the week. It's a Monday. And when I was setting up the schedule for this week's Morning Mindset Cafes, I thought, hmm, Monday, what happens to so many people on Mondays? Those who have... Um, jobs working for other people on set schedules, and even even those of us who are business owners who take Sunday off as the day of rest to recharge and what have you. Monday can be the start of something good. Yes, I know any day can be. But I got to thinking that a lot of us think in terms of our calendars, right? And we think, I do, I mean, I look up, I can tell you right now what's happening, scheduled to happen over the next few weeks, um, and actually over the next few months. And I'm excited about some of the things, got a live workshop that starts on Thursday, and we have people signed up, love it when people sign up for things, you know, I get to train and I love to train. And there's other things that are happening, but that's not today. Okay, see, that's not today. Today is Monday. And for many, they're not that excited about your week, are you? So what I'd like to talk about is taking the leap of faith and cross that starting line. Yes, that's what I said, cross the starting line. When I think of a race... I see all, especially a foot race, all right? So when I think of a foot race, I see all of the runners in their starting stance, right? In the ready stance. And then the timekeeper does the ready, set, go. And each stance is slightly different. The athlete is preparing themselves to cross the starting line. And when the timekeeper and the flagman says go, only when they cross the starting line does the race begin. So you have to start someplace, and it's not just sitting there. It's not in the ready position. It's not even in the set position. Nothing happens until you go and you cross the start line. Then things get happening, things get moving, um, things get put in place, people respond to what you're offering. Um, the day gets moving quicker, <laughs> it gets moving forward in the direction you want it to go. Um, same holds true, now this one I know even better, same holds true in car races. So one time I raced go-karts and for a short time trucks on dirt. I got to tell you, it's all well and good that that we're going around the track, warming up the engine and then on asphalt, warming up the tires a bit. But we're not racing. Things aren't really happening. Nothing important is happening other than we're warming up. See, we're getting ready. And what happens if we stay in that ready position? Yeah, nothing can't even jockey for position. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, having, having raced vehicles, you can't, there's no jockeying for position. You're kind of all over the place in one big mob, a swarm of vehicles on asphalt. Uh, on dirt, it's a little more controlled because it can get pretty slick on dirt. But um, there's, there's no racing, there's no rubbing, there's, you know, occasionally there's a look at the other, like, you're my competition and I'm going to get you as soon as we cross the start line and there might be a little trash talk sign language happening between the drivers but nothing happens until until the flag drops and everybody crosses the start line hence I want to talk about crossing a start line get going get moving sometimes it takes a leap of faith what does that mean? What does that mean to take a leap of faith? I can tell you what it means for me. Um, it means that I only have 
60% of the information. Or I might not even know how much I have. It could be that I'm thinking to myself, I just don't have enough information. I don't have enough information. I don't have enough information. And three years later, it's I don't have enough information. I don't have enough information. Maybe this over here will help me. Maybe. Maybe I'll take this course. And I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer. Um, but it's true. I get people who come through my workshops and never do a darn thing with what they've learned. Because they have to learn more. They have to learn more. They either have no faith in themselves or no faith in the information that they learned. That that's what they needed. That's why they took it. They're stuck in neutral. Revving the engine. In the uh, ready position. And they never cross the start line. So nothing gets going. There is no finish. There, there can't be a finish. There cannot be an end if you don't start. So that's what I was thinking when I came up with this as a topic. I don't know if it's resonated with anybody. If it has, jump on in. Let's talk about it. What does it mean to take a leap of faith? Get, you know, are, are you up for sharing the example of what that means? How you did it? What it looked like? get Angie in here. Uh oh, hey. can't see you. Yeah, I still Hi, have a cold. Hi. How are so you? My, my, I got a fever, so I'm not really the greatest, but oh, I am um, still here willing to participate. I ain't working, though. I'm going to be offline. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, my, my idea of faith, deep, taking that leap of faith, is very similar to what you said. However, it's also, for me, is my leap of faith, what makes me go that way is knowing that if it doesn't work out the way I'm hoping, that I can deal with it if it doesn't. Okay, so the faith portion is saying that whether it, whether it works or not, mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to deal with it. Yes, I'm going to be okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that was the same for me. When I say I take a leap of faith. Um, and I did that not too long ago with the project. You know, it was time to get it going. It's just time. That's it. We, yeah. We've got to just jump in and do it. Um, well, and it wasn't a, um, we'll fix it along the way. As much as it was, we've got the outline. We've got everything we need. We just need to pull the content together and go. Just do it. What's, what's holding us back? And what was holding us back was we still weren't sure it was going to be accepted by a community. And even though we had some information that said they were, they wanted mm -hmm. this, right? Mm -hmm. We were still, well, what if we put all this, and I didn't say it, somebody else did. What if we put all this together and nobody signs up? <laughs> so... Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so what if nobody signs up? We do it again. You know, we do it again because yeah, I, what we're putting together. Is I had that happen. <laughs> I had that happen. My uh, my second seminar that I did two years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I I had a lot of interest. A lot of people that were saying maybe. Mm -hmm. like, I was using Facebook at the time, <laughs> and when I got there. I waited 20 minutes. The presentation person, which was my co-host, they were there, I was there, and that was it. So we both looked at one another after 20 minutes and thought, you know what? Let's just go through the motion. So we pretended there was people sitting in the seats. Love <laughs> so it. Got, yeah, like I said, back then, it, we were still rookies, eh? Yeah, but you yep. but you got in a good rehearsal. Yep. See that? Was, it. Go ahead. <laughs> now the nice thing too was uh, I should have waited ten more minutes because yeah. everybody that showed up after thought it started at seven thirty, not seven. <laughs> like really? Oh so I ended, my. Yeah, I ended up with twelve people. 
Oh, that's fa- that's fantastic. Yeah, it was scary. It was very scary there from the beginning. It is. It kind of brings back the old school what I had, which was, what if I have a party and nobody shows up? Total oh, rejection, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it feels like, is you're rejecting me. Um, it's not true, from what I can gather from those who followed me all these years and um, the feedback I got from uh, the programs I do put on, that's not it. It's often timing right. or it's the uh, uh, the money. You know, they're not expecting to pay what, what the, the workshop costs. They're a little surprised. Um, when I have conversations with people, that's what they're telling me. Or it's timing. It's usually the three that happen. It's the timing. Um, well, you had it on a Thursday, and I don't do anything on Thursdays. I, you know, I'm at the hospital on Thursdays, or I always, this is my schedule, and it just didn't fit in. So what we've done, and one way that I assuage the uh, nervousness of, not this one that starts on Thursday, but another one, I said, all right, so let's think this through. What if nobody shows up? It's a live workshop, virtual, Mm -hmm. and nobody shows up. So like just it. like Angie yeah. did, what do we do? Yeah. So we, I told her, I said, what we do is we conduct the workshop, we record it. Now we have a recording to sell. Yep. Yeah. And then we can offer live office hours, you know, um, mm-hmm. at particular times throughout the year so that those who join and they can, they'll be a part of the, the private Facebook, Facebook group. So they have access to us for Q&A and, and guidance. So when, and she just looked, oh, Wow. Yeah, yeah of that. So, and we get the we get a full rehearsal. I said, so here's the beauty yeah. of it: nobody shows, and we get a full rehearsal, and we record, and it really sucks. We well, do it again right. differently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, like you say, it teaches you a lesson, right? Yeah. Well, lesson like that you can learn from and, and improve upon. Take advantage of what you have in front of you. Mm-hmm. Is the way I look at that. Now it's totally different. There was a time when I did these in person. And that was the most nerve-wracking, annoying thing ever would be to schedule something and then have nobody show. So what what I and my fellow instructor did was we set it up where you have to call. You call, you pay, we'll be there. And then that ended up working out pretty well. Um, So we'd have, I don't care if it's one or a hundred. Yeah, I really don't. One or a hundred. If they paid, by gosh, they're going to get the best that we can offer, and that's what we always did. So, and that's what I intend Agreed. to do. If I mean, we have signups for Thursday. By the way, we still have room um, for uh, mindful social selling. But um, when the next one launches, we got two more launching, and in April. Oh yeah, you know. So okay. To jump in, but you got to cross the start line, right? Yeah. You got to get started. I get grew started. up in a family with cars, so I know that one. <laughs> did you go to the races? Well, we did when we were younger, but it was more like derby. It really no. wasn't a racing race. No, it's not a racing race, but it's still fun. No. Yeah, I didn't see car parts fly all over the place. Yeah, I, I never did thought- yeah, I wouldn't want to have a wheelchair derby because I don't want to hurt my wheelchair. Well, put bumpers. <laughs> yeah, I know. My dad always wanted to put a shovel on the front. Not so a shovel. Put, put, a big, put a big ring around, right? Put yeah. a big ring around at the at the wheel hub. Mm-hmm. And attached to the wheel hub, big old bumpers for everybody. And you have no, wheelchair I, bumper cars. I, I do wonder what people think in their mind. Of what that starting line is to them. Mm, I think that's an excellent question. Do they yeah, even have uh, a starting line? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's, would you consider the starting line the same thing as what you want to achieve? Like a goal? Mm-mm. Or is it just... No, that's the end goal. That's the end line. Yeah, that's, that's a finish end. line, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what people view their starting line as. So maybe and that's part of the problem. The first person that sit down in the chair. You're the starting line because you're the first one to sit down. I don't know. No, I do. 
I do. If if you are if you have an end goal in mind, whatever that end goal is, mm -hmm. you have to start to get there. You have to start on the path to get there. So what I often guide people through is let's start with the end in mind. Let's work backwards to see what the path looks like. Right. And when you have the path laid out, generally have a good outline. People will get stuck. I did. I did this. Other people do this as well. Get stuck on the details of what that outline should be and then get stuck in the hows and the wherefores within a bullet point, right? Because we're still in the ready position. See, that's what I mean. You get stuck in those details of the planning. Yeah. You have to stop planning and start doing. But uh -huh. and honestly, I think that sometimes a good swift kick and just do one of the bullet points and at least get started can make a difference. Because if you've got bullet points, <coughs> right? Yeah, I will. Admit, I sometimes do that. But I'm a lot like your friend Gail. I kind of fly that? off the cuff. I fly <laughs> off at the cuff. <laughs> and She's I, I fun. Like to, seriously, because I do like to go with the flow, right? Mm -hmm. But I also want to make sure that I'm not omitting the key information that I want them to walk away with. Right. Now, right? I can that's go with that's that. That's where my notes come in. I was talking to Gail not too long ago because she was saying right? how wonderful it was to have somebody organized like me. You know, I'm a planner. And I said, well, it's more, it's just as wonderful to have somebody like you, Angie and Gail, who is spontaneous all the time because it, it's good for me, the planner, to just think of something, be inspired by it, and move forward with it. Now, that's pretty much the way she and I worked. Quite honestly, in my mind, she doesn't think so. She thinks I planned um, a lot. That's how she views it. But oh, yeah. I saw, I saw that this is what I, you know, I've got my plan. I've got the path. It's just knowing that there's flexibility in there. I don't have all the details of what each bullet point has. But I knew that when I was watching her and we had done a, a program together, I said, boy, we work well together. Mm -hmm. So I said, what, if, what would it look like? What do you think of us doing a couple programs together and then creating something right. together to sell? And um, she said, boy, that could be fun. I said, well, this is what I'm working towards. And she says, well, this is what I'm working towards. And we both, two different directions for the end, right. you know, for what our businesses are. But we looked at what it was that we would be creating now and it would benefit both of us. And so you saw yourself it. You were very complimentary to one another. Yeah. And so it yeah. and and we found that and we feel very comfortable with each other. And we said, let's do this. Let's see what happens, right? It doesn't detract from either one of our businesses. It supports both our businesses and we have very different businesses. But along the so, way, there's this one yeah. piece, the one little piece that we can both benefit from and work on. So was it those characters that uh Gave you the willingness to take the leap to go with her? What do you mean, the characters? Well, like her personality, the way she worked, the way she behaved. All um, those things that you just mentioned. Oh, yeah. It was, it was the sum of who Gail is. Gail is um, very grounded in the same type of values that I have. The way to treat mm -hmm. people. The way you expect to be treated. Um, the level of ethics that she has. Her integrity. We've watched each other, she and I. We've watched each other for months. Um, I've watched her replay. She's watched mine. And I didn't know it. She didn't know it, right? And, but it wasn't just like this out of nowhere, first time we met, let's jump in and, and do something. Yeah. Um, it came up to, I was struck with an idea and said, hey, what do you think? And she says, boy, I, that, that could really be good. Let's talk about it. So we did. And, and we spent all of 15, 20 minutes and both saw because here's the thing. I think mm -hmm. this is a secret. If there's a secret, I think this is it. <laughs> we we had already both start crossed the starting line towards working on our businesses and building them. Right. And building our businesses. We know what our business is. And so <laughs> when I presented the idea, I knew that it would benefit my business. She saw within minutes, yeah, that can work. 
that's the kind of audience I'm looking for. That's the kind of customer I'm looking for. That's who I want to work mm -hmm. with. So, well, then why don't we just jump in and do this? And hey. so we did. All right, we're okay. Think, yeah, but I think the secret is that mm -hmm. we both knew what our end goals were. And we could see how this yeah. new thing could line up with those end goals. <laughs> that is true. That's well, my dear lady, I'm going to have to get out of here because talking oh. making me want to cough more. Okay. I'm so, so sorry just, you feel badly. That's okay. I'll, I'll sandy bag. Okay. <laughs> okay. That? Thank you, Angie. It was good to have you on with me. Always good to have you on. Anybody else want to jump in? Talk about taking that leap of faith. What's that look like? What's it feel like? Is it scary to have that kind of faith? Do you do it in spite of the fear? And then uh, cross the starting line. Cross the starting line. Hmm. Jump on in. Join me. Have a cup of coffee. So do we have to, hmm, when we take a leap of faith, are we doing it by ourselves? And do we have to? Do we have to do it by ourselves? Or even cross the starting line? Do we have to feel like we're all by our lonesome doing it by ourselves? Because that may be what's keeping us from just doing it. I think really who I'm talking to is, is me at one time before I started my business. Scary as all get out to start my own business. Scary, scary, scary stuff. That was a leap of faith. Truly put the faith. Had no idea what the future held. And then within months... The recession hits. Oh, yeah. I like the new call-in feature, so I'm not doing this when I'm in her camera. <laughs> so do we, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. I actually Excellent. got the lead. Oh, that's good news. Oh, look, I just got notification that I went live. <laughs> Only 30 minutes into the program. How fun is that? <laughs> Crazy. Welcome to beta. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. All right. So what do you think? Leap of what's going on? Yeah, what do you think when when I say take a leap of faith, cross the starting line? Wrong machine, kid. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's older than I am. What am I talking about, kid? Um no I, idea. You're talking to me, to Angie? <laughs> Angie. Um, I think the leap of faith is <laughs> gathering thoughts. I okay. think I think it's more subjective than the other. Right. I, I think when you take that leap of faith, you already have it planned out. Um, I don't like that expression, being fearful of heights. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what's below you when you jump. Right. Um, you, uh, that leap of faith uh, doesn't mean you're going to die in the end. You're just trying it out. Just to see what's going to come up. Are you saying that we know more than we think we do? Mm -hmm. When we take the leap of faith, we actually do more, think we actually do know more than we think we do. I think that's what I heard you say. I think that's in a lot of things. Yeah. I think a lot of self doubt is. Wow, I'm not awake this morning. A lot of self-doubt is is not willing to look beneath you. Mm -hmm. Is a leap of faith illustration here. 
Um, I, I think, you know, like this morning, you're getting up, you're getting on camera, the collar may be screwed up, the, the nose may need to be cleaned, whatever. Um, you, you take that leap of faith without the preparation because it's faith. You're, you're jumping, but you always prepare for safety. You need the safety net. So, okay. That's interesting because what went through my mind is the fact that I have faith is my safety net. Mm. I'm putting my faith in something. I'm putting my faith in something. And when I think of leap of faith, I am thinking I am I am putting my my faith and my spirit and my emotions and my outcomes into something greater than me. But you've already planned for the outcome. And either way that yeah. it goes. I mean. Well, I've planned for the outcome, but I don't know that I've prepared for both possibilities or all the multiple possibilities that can happen. You, you were know? talking about it before I came on. You jump on screen. You prepare this this workshop or whatever you want to call it. Right. You know if nobody shows up, it's not going to kill you. Right. Just not going to produce anything. Right. There isn't going to be any revenue from that particular instance. So. Well, that's part of the outcome. I can plan the outcome that says that, you know, we'll have continuing revenue from this. What if it sucks? <laughs> I can have all the, all the oomph in the world to it, right? that this is something I really believe in. This is what I love to do. And it just flies like a lead balloon. You know, am I prepared for that? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's part of the leap of faith that you don't have to be fully prepared for all potential outcomes. So I can use myself as an illustration here. Um, when I was a kid, my goal was to become a forest ranger. Mm -hmm. um, I did not go to school for it. I did not prepare for it, but I've always wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. Then my health started failing. Then the MS, before I even knew what it was, started setting in. Mm -hmm. um, kind of derailed that forestry plan because <laughs> a lot of forestry is walking mountain trails and and, and doing things like that yeah. um so so i i went into technology um you could say that didn't turn out so well either but i still have a passion for it so I'm happy with it. It just isn't producing right now. Okay. Um, the end goal is to make it produce. Okay. So what I, <laughs> I don't Go know. Go ahead. No, I'm I understand. You, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, crossing the start line. Sounds like you have. You've crossed the I've start line. Crossed the start line, and I'm heading towards the middle of the race, I guess. Um, I th for the end goal to happen, I think there's a lot of things that have to come into play. A lot of principles, a lot of activity, a lot of um, hustle. You know, well, sometimes plus. grind, all the work involved, and everything else. Um, but that, to me, isn't that comes with whatever it is that we we cross the start line and go into. I agree, and I've had a lot of things thrown in the path of the the uh, track. <laughs> yeah, obstacles, run sure. Run around. Um, so it's you know, no no race has a direct path. Correct. I I don't think that 
you're not going to face anything worth doing without the obstacles. Nothing worth having is, is, well, what is it? If it's worth having, it's worth working for. And that means going through the obstacles and what have you. So if you, if you, start something and it started with an initial leap of faith now the question i guess turns to how are you able to sustain that faith as you are hitting those obstacles that might be another way to look at that because that's what that's what i'm hearing you that's what i'm hearing you say that's what's going through my and mind that's what i'm talking. saying just wording it better <laughs> oh. i don't know that it's better it's the only way i know to word it that's the way i was hearing it okay and Walter's saying, the saying, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Does that resonate with a leap of faith? I think so, only because that which hasn't killed me has that which has made me stronger. Because there are still a few things that hasn't killed me yet. Still working on that. Not sure how much stronger I am because of it. But those that have and those that I can identify have strengthened my faith, to be honest with you. They've strengthened my faith in myself and in my God, because um, without, without, um, well, honestly, without faith in God, I would not have made it through a few things that I have. It would not have happened. I would have imploded, um, but I didn't. So I think that the strength that comes from that kind of faith, what you're talking about, Walter, and actually what Brian's talking about makes taking that leap a little better because we have a strong faith upon which we can take with us, right? That That's what I meant by the faith is what's going to get us through. That's the backup plan, basically. And we have a life preserver. <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. It actually is. The faith is a life preserver. There you go. Uh, you know, I've never... Go ahead. never... I've never liked Nietzsche. I, I just, that whole, what doesn't kill you make me stronger. You mean I have to die to get stronger? I don't think so. <laughs> but, no, it, uh, no, it's the, um, you know, it's what, what the struggle. You make it through the struggle. And I agree that with that. Um, um, but you make it through the struggle. It's not just I survived the struggle. It is you make it through the struggle. So it's more than just saying um, that which didn't kill me made me stronger. It's It goes a little deeper in that um, I paid attention along the way. Well, it goes to weight loss. I've always struggled with weight. Um, always. And, uh, you know, it hurts to lose weight. You've got to exercise those muscles because if you don't, they do this thing called atrophy, and it's no fun because then it's even harder to get those muscles moving again. Right. Um, so you've got to, and especially with my condition, you've got to stay active. You've mm -hmm. got to because if you don't, you will feel it. And it's painful. So, um, yeah, the saying is true, whether I like it or not. Um, but we got to exercise, and that goes beyond just physical. I mean, you got to exercise, making money, you got to exercise all this stuff. So, right. you got to exercise your brain. Pretty much just do the work. Yeah. Well, isn't that exercise? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just a different way. Those who are really put off by the word exercise. <laughs> Was that self-disclosure? <laughs> Little self-disclosure, yeah. Hence the ordering of, all right, so here's, speaking of exercise, one thing that I've been saying and not doing for months is that I need to be moving more more than what I am. I've moved a little bit more, but not enough to really make a big difference. It's a start, but it's a puny start. It's lame. All right. It's just lame. I know this. So I was um, realizing as spring is coming that one thing I could do is start walking 
up to 30 minutes a day, go through the neighborhood type of thing. And, you know, it's like, really? And I mean, no motivation. <laughs> It's like, it's, I've had some beautiful days go by where I've said, oh, I could have walked. Hmm. <laughs> That's when I realized how lame, how lame my excuses were. So what I've done, what I've done is I've taken a look at what's going on. Well, what goes on with me is I have to, in some instances, I really do need to see an immediate result from my work. The kind of work I do now when I'm creating things, when I'm strategizing, when I'm working with a client, it takes a while to get to the end. And when we get to the end, it's great. But sometimes, boy, it'd be nice if I could just see something mm -hmm. happen, you know, see a result now. And that's pretty much where I've been. Because most of what I've been working on is short term, but it's still longer than just right now or today and so i said well i am going to purchase a manual lawnmower the real type and i will use that to we'll get rid of the monthly lawn care bill this is my husband's deal he he decided he was going to take care of the lawn so he uh he got somebody else to take care of the lawn anyway so I decided I'm going to purchase this lawnmower and what I will do is simply mow the lawn every day. I can start out at 15 minutes. I can start, oh, it doesn't matter. I just need to get out there and start doing it. And then I said, as soon as I get the, the first sign up to workshop, because then it will more than pay for the lawnmower. I said, that's what I'll do. So it's being ordered today because we have more than just one have signed up. But when the first one signed up, I said, okay, I need to go find it. And then I got, you know, focused on other projects. So today it's going to be purchased and probably be here next week. And that's what I'll do. Because I'm not going to have a choice. The grass is going to grow. It's going to have to be done. And I've always loved to mow grass. That was the other thing I identified. I said, I've always loved it. Even as a kid, I enjoyed it. So why not use it as an opportunity to work out not going to make any noise. That means I can I can mow at 2 o'clock in the morning if I want to. Get a little light out there if I want to. It's not a big deal because there's no motor. So I'm not going to disturb anybody. I know. Start. And then here's the plan. I start with the side and one side of the house and the front over, the, over two days, maybe three. Depends on how long it will take me. And then move to the other side and to the back day after day after day and maybe take a day or two off maybe i don't know we'll see how that works could be that i'm mowing every single morning wouldn't that be cool how many acres is it I've got an acre and a half okay before long you'll be doing it one day could very well be i'm already thinking if that when that happens when it's hey this is not that big a deal then we could add in some of the tree trimming, some of the bush trimming, some of, but one thing at a time. If I were to jump in now, I would pass out, to be honest with you. I would pass out. Um, but even if I were to tell myself, so here's the thing, even if I were to tell myself so that I will have all of this as part of my morning routine, right? And the trim, I can do the the trees, I can do the bushes and everything else. I've already overwhelmed myself. I've overplanned it and I'm never going to start, never going to cross the starting line. So instead, you know what? I'm getting a lawnmower. By gosh, I'll just get out there. That's, all. That's the only thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to mow the lawn. That's it. We'll start there. Yeah, you'll grow into it and you'll feel a lot better. Cause I oh, absolutely. I, I have no doubt about that. When I exercise, I know I just feel great afterwards. Oh, um, yeah. And especially after the muscles have stretched and all that. Um, once they're set, we're mm -hmm. good to go. Um, I have no doubt about that. I This is the way I look at it. The cost of the lawnmower would be two months at a gym. Just two months. That's so, and I've used, I've done that. I've, God, I'd get up at, uh, well, cause I get up so early. I'd be at the gym at five o'clock in the morning and I'd work out and I hated every minute of it. 
and I didn't feel awesome. I actually fell asleep half the time because if I overexercise, I, you know, I want to just fall asleep. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't energize me. And I come back and I'm all sweaty and it's nasty and I'm not seeing, you know, any results month, two months, three months. I'm not seeing any real solid results. And um, it's like, ugh, you know, really, I'm paying for this and it's, ugh. and I didn't like going, you know. And everybody kept telling me, well, you just keep going. It'll kick in. It'll kick in. Didn't kick in. <laughs> Didn't kick in. Like what Walter said here, result is a tradition of time, experience, and patience. Oh. And then I get a lawnmower, and I can see that I just mowed a lawn. I've got shorter grass. Works for me. Because <laughs> you see, I had two, two things are happening. One is Charlene's out there and, and moving right? A little strenuously getting some, a bit of a workout in and that which needs to be done is getting done. The lawn is getting mowed. I think that's, that's a win-win. I can get, I can get up for that. You know, I can get out for that. That's how I work. Well, that's how I work. So I didn't necessarily need a, a leap of faith as much as it needed some looking at to say, what the heck is holding me back here? You know, let's take a look at the pros and cons. And it really wasn't all that serious. I didn't sit down with my notepad and write this one out. I was in, I was talking with somebody similar to what I'm doing with you, Brian. You know, I was talking with somebody and it started coming out and I'm like, I'm hearing myself. Oh, geez. All right. I'm going to look outside to see what the dog was barking at. Give me 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay. She doesn't yeah. bark. It's a problem. Yeah. So it was, um, you know, just in conversation, finally hearing myself. Enough. Enough. So I've got it taken care of. Anybody want to join in the conversation here? Let's talk about um, are you considering doing something and something's holding you back? Oh, yeah. Oh, is it, I guess the question is, um, are you over planning? Are you stuck in the planning? Because what can happen to me, especially when planning out um, a workshop is, and I've done, I've been doing workshops since 09, is sometimes get planning too deep. I've got to have all the content ready now. You know, and honestly, I don't especially when it's something I've been doing since 09. I don't. Sometimes you don't have to have it all set right now. You do when you launch, but not to get moving forward, not to cross the start line. Well, it's a beta. <laughs> you know. There you go. Everything's a beta. It's all a work in progress, right? No, everything is. Um, even marriage, yeah. if you think about it, it's it's... Well, it's a work in progress. The end result, but you're always working towards each other. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, always working for the betterment. You're always working for, uh, for more mm -hmm. of each other. So it, it's, to me, it's, we're all in beta. <laughs> I'm not finished yet. God knows exactly. That. If we look at it, we're all a work in progress. The current projects we have are works in progress. Everything can be improved. That's what I should yeah. get is a t-shirt that says Beta Brian. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> just say, I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> there you go. That'll work. That'll work. Yeah, so we get caught up in um, it's got to be just right. You know, and now I can go with that. I can go with that. It's got to be, there has to be a level of, of a standard, a, a, you know, of excellence that must be met for me to put out a product or um, launch something. There is that level. Um, so recognizing that and recognizing what that level is simply means to me that I know what I'm working towards, but I'm working towards it. I've crossed the start line. You know, that doesn't hold back. It doesn't hold me back from getting out of the ready position. I yeah, everything is perfectly imperfect. 
I guess against whose standards? I mean, that's the, you know, I've talked about people, I've talked about working with broken people and oftentimes people stay broken because they have this idea that they have to be perfect before they can be acceptable. The problem comes, well, define for me what perfect is. And then I disagree with them. Your idea of perfect isn't everybody's idea of perfect. And you're saying that you need to meet everybody's idea of perfect because you've gotten into everybody's head and determined what they think perfect is. And then you realize that it's really your own head that's telling you what perfect is. And it doesn't match what everybody else's idea of perfect is because you never talk to them. Right? You never talk so, to them. So is your husband perfect? Perfect for me. <laughs> yes. You were supposed to answer no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I am. I am the perfect representation of Charlene. I mean, you can't. You, don't. <laughs> you know, the only reason I have flaws and shortcomings and what have you is because I aspire to be more than what I am right now, and I'm not there yet. That's the way I look at it. And I think that that has to come in with some leap of faith as well, not just personal development, but when we're creating something, again, there's there's levels of excellence, there's standards, you know, that um, in order to put out a good product, something that the customer is really going to benefit from, that sort of thing, that has to be in place. But the getting there can be outlined and then Again, you got to get out of the ready position and, and go. Hi, Angie. Welcome back. Hello. Yeah, I was just reading, I think, who is this, Walter? Uh, well, yeah, Walter. Uh, yeah, oh, I your question. Know, he... Yeah, Brian's in the seat. Yeah, Walter is saying, um, I think what holds people back from wanting to succeed <laughs> with the business is they think they need to make sure things are perfect before they start. Exactly. That's just I, I call that not putting your ducks in a row. Pardon me? I, did, I like getting my ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. I just don't know always what, how many ducks I need. There you go. <laughs> Love that. But here's the thing. I was just uh, curious about this leap of faith thing again. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, I caught myself thinking, if I wasn't born disabled... Would I still be doing more leaping or less leaping? You know, because like, uh, I wonder if my environment really has a influence on what it is that I do and how I do it. Oh, I think it does. I would say no, because I'm also disabled. Quote, I hate that word. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I hear you. But, you know, seriously, when I look at you, Brian, I, I don't see it. Only because... I, I, I envy your position. You can get vertical. Yes, I heard you say that, you know, if you don't keep moving, you get stiff and you're going to end up atrophying your poor muscles. And that is part of what my disorder is. But I still wonder, you know, my ability to cope, would it still be like that if I wasn't? Are you sure it's not more of a mindset? See, again... My mindset, is it influenced by my physical? Is it influenced by the environment? Is it influenced by my parents' upbringing? I think it's Would influenced. You Angie, I think it's influenced. Yeah. Uh, the word that you're using with influenced, I do think it's influenced. I also I think that you, we have the ability to change it. We have the ability to change our mindset, exactly. to see things differently, to take a different perspective to learn from others, to purposefully go out and seek those we can learn from. Um, it, it is interesting for me, mm -hmm. and this is not meant, to, it's not meant to sound mean, but I do look at all you vertical people, yeah. and I wonder, you know, seriously, mm -hmm. what advice can they offer me? You know, because sure. you guys are not in my situation, right? So I take that leap of faith Mm -hmm. And I go, say, based on somebody else's thinking, and I will try it knowing, again, that I could cope if it fails. And there's the secret. You have the faith yes. 
the faith that gives you the ability to cope so that you can handle if it doesn't work. But I do, I still wonder, is it because of my disability or is it because of my genetics? Is it environment? I keep going in circles. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That'll happen if you have a brake on one of the wheels. <laughs> yeah. Does that matter? <laughs> Sorry. Does that matter? <laughs> in the grand in the scheme end. of things, in the can end. you overcome it? Hmm. Honestly, I never really thought about that part. Does it matter how you got there? Well, if I wanted to be an example for somebody else, yes. Okay. Is, really? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. So. Hey, okay, well, here, I'll give you a backup, a okay. little history. Okay. When I was younger, knowing what my disability was, mm-hmm. at that time, in, in that time in medicine, in society in 1970, early 80s, mm-hmm. there really wasn't a lot of people like me. So I ran around with the mindset of an able-bodied person. I didn't know any better mm-hmm. until all of a sudden I bumped into a woman that was just down the road. I never went down this road, and she had the same disorder as I did. So okay. I could I related to her, and a lot of things that she told me then, she was 36, I was 18. So, I mean, it made more sense what I heard from her than what I would have heard from my high school friend, you know, and, yeah, so, like, being an example for somebody, which she was for me, a lot of what she said, I adopted so, yes, how I get there does matter, because if she done something and it didn't work well, then she might have felt bad for suggesting it. But unfortunately, that poor soul did pass on, so I have no other way of contacting her. <laughs> but, yeah, it does matter to me how I do it and how I get there, especially if I'm going to want to be what I call the carrot for somebody else. Right. So where I was coming from was, Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how I got to where I am right now, mentally or emotionally or physically. Okay. If I want to move past where I am right now. Exactly. That's where I was coming from. So there's two ways to look at it. There's two ways to look at it. If, If I want to be an example for somebody else, and in some instances, I am. Some of the people I work with, um, mm-hmm. it requires that I preset the stage by telling how I got where I am because that's the point yeah. of commonality. That's where the rapport is. That's where they understand that you get it. And it's important yeah. because of where <laughs> they are right now and where they want to go. It's important to have somebody who gets where I am right now gets True. gets it right i'm way ahead just as she was way ahead than you were and you got to see that i could I, well there's other things i can do there's other ways to handle this there's other ways to do this there's hope here there's greatness over here there's awesome stuff over here there's ick over you know all the stuff that comes with a common experience a, a common uh-huh. life experience so we have that mm-hmm. then we have I am, I am where I am, and I want to get to another point, and it has nothing to do with um, what got me here to this point, all right? So I did all the work to get myself here. I did all the work to, uh, I have, uh, I mean, quite simply, I've turned my insides inside out, upside down, <laughs> sideways. I've, I've reviewed, I've analyzed, I've... Um, yeah. I have gotten to know myself so well, it's ridiculous. And then I walked away for a while because I was tired of getting to know me. Um, but there's a lot of work here. You know, there was a lot of work here to um, um, overcome, walk through, change, what have you. All right. So now I'm to a point where I don't want somebody who's gone through all of this to get me to here that's ahead of me. That's not as important as 
All right, I am now ready for something different. I want now to get to hear who is here right now and how did they get there. And in all honesty, mm -hmm. it's most of it is mental. Most of it sure. is, um, this is that second level, right? Most of it is being able to see the possibilities to <clears throat> tell me how did you get here? I will do what you did. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter that whether or not we share the same life experiences at this point because it's different. That's all. It's just different. Yeah, well, business is different from life. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. Um, um, I think that they tie in together and it's even better when you have somebody who's had the same life experiences, but I don't think it's required. Um, mm -hmm. Not on the level of what you're talking about. They're definitely on the level of what you're talking about. Because again, I've worked, I work with, with people and help, um, help women that need right. to know, that need to know you can go from where you are now to here. Because I've been there and the importance, I'm not going to discount the importance of the um, I get you experience. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to discount that at all. Right. Oh, that was interesting. I love that you brought it up, though. Because I think that it also will stop us from crossing the start line. Mm -hmm. It can also stop us, can it? Oh, yeah. And uh, the lady here, what, what's the poor lady's name here? One that just put up a comment Charita. there. Yeah, is that how you say it, Charita? That's how I say it. If I said it wrong, yeah. she'll So, well, to answer her, uh, yes, I, I mean, I'm not really trying to teach other disabled people. I am basically trying to make other people, in general, the population, aware of what a disability can do. Not so much what they can't do. Though I think it's very important. It's like being a celebrity. They have to be careful what they say and how they say it because they know they are influencing others. So that part of what kind of holds me back just a little bit from crossing that starting line because I do intend to do webinars and I have been doing seminars but I've never written a book because I hate typing. And I do do, I do take advantage of YouTube, right, which is why I'm here on Blab. Some of what I will do on Blab will be uploaded to YouTube. So it's something that, you know, I, I tend to really think about because I know it's going to affect them. And I've already had somebody call me their guardian angel. And I really, I mean, I like, I like that, but I'm also afraid of it. You know what I mean? Because they're putting a lot in me. So yeah, that kind of holds me back. Yeah, it holds me back a little bit. There's a, there's a sense of responsibility that comes with it that's pretty big. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it would be like a parent, right? That's Almost. what parents probably think about, yeah? Almost. What was that, Brian? I, I was going to say, you're raising the bar. You're raising the level of expectation. When I think of disabled, I hate that dis on the front label. Yeah. Because it's negative. It starts <laughs> with, you can't. And mm -hmm. I, I want to reframe that. I want to say, wait a minute. Tell me I can't do something, and I will, I will crawl to get it done. Um, yeah, there again, you're taking that leap of faith to do it just to, to prove somebody else wrong. This, this spring, I'm going to walk up Pikes Peak. Somebody mm -hmm. with MS should not be able to do that. <laughs> um, and... We can get you going on the wheelchair. I don't know if it'll go up the inclines, but if not, I'll drive you up where the wheelchair fails. Um, uh, you, you would love my wheelchair. I got a lot of torque. <laughs> I really I do. This thing, it does climb. It's incredible. Fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah, I I want I want to take a group of people, able-bodied or not, 
mm -hmm. all the way up to the top of Pikes Peak. I live in Colorado Springs, if nobody knew that. Um, and it's right there. Um, oh, yeah. It's my mountain. You can borrow it, but put it back, please. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. I'm not supposed to be walking. I'm supposed to be where Indy is now. By the grace of God, I'm not. Yeah. But, and honestly, too, Brian, I hear you on that one. Because when I was diagnosed, they told my parents to kiss my ass goodbye before I'm five. Wow. I'm 52. So, again, like you, I'm thankful for the man upstairs. <laughs> wow. So, so, anyway, dear people, I have to go again because talking and make me feel plenty again. Okay, dear. Well, so glad you jumped yeah. on. So glad. And yeah, what we're talking it. about, honestly, and what you just mm -hmm. rounded up with was that by having a, a foundation of faith in something other than yourself, so that you can have faith in yourself, you know, is an is, is this great starting point to just taking a leap. That's your cushion. That's your fallback, right? That's your strength. There, and that's your strength. Exactly. Cross that starting line. You've got the end in mind. For God's sake, now's the time to do it. Just do it. Darn Nike for stealing that slogan. <laughs> But that's I'll really use it. <laughs> what's stopping you. Take a look at what's stopping you. Are you stuck in? Don't overplan. Here's the thing. I can tell you right now, if you overplan, you're really going to be disappointed because the minute other people get into the works, they're going to muck it up. The I plan have, will have to change. <laughs> so if you plan. have anything that involves other people, just know that. <laughs> what was that, Brian? I had a friend of mine who uh, is, was a plumber. And he was really amazed with the internet and everything. And he says, here's what you need to do, Brian. You need to find a way to stream movies. This was back in the 90s, like 95. And I said, yeah, but the bandwidth won't handle it. Got to have the tech. I made it the excuse of, well, I can't. But if we were to condense it, the 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 value of it. Could have worked on the other side of it, right? Not or just on the tech. Quality of it would have been a little less. But the possibility would have still be, been you would be sitting in front of your computer watching movies. And I didn't think of every avenue at that time. So I could have been the founder of Netflix. By um, gosh, it could have been. I could have done that if I would have expanded my thinking. Possibly. If that was what you were interested in doing and that's where you wanted to go. I mean, honestly, I could be a best selling I could be a best selling fiction writer right now. If I had continued on a path that I had taken at one time. I could be um, a well known sculptural artist with seed beads. I was good. I mean, I sold at art fairs. I was, you know, got juried into um the specialty shows you know had commission pieces the and mm, <laughs> i don't want world renowned it, what was it it served its purpose you know what i was doing served its purpose what was its purpose stress relief <laughs> that's all it was i was wound up so tight i went to a, mas a massage therapist and she, her specialty was working with um, athletes. And um, so she was giving me sports massage and she worked out my back, my shoulder, my arms, um, got them loosened up and got one side loosened up, worked over to the other side, came back and said, good God, all the knots are back and worked on me. It took her. <laughs> It took multiple, multiple times, and then I ended up going back. That's how stressed I was. So, so again, it served its purpose, you know. I mean, I could have been a concert pianist. All I had to do was show up for the audition. I have no doubt, no doubt that I had the talent, and the skill just needed to be refined. That was the whole point of, of going to a specialty school. But, you know, I didn't. So what am I doing now? What am I doing now that I need to take that leap of faith? 
what what am I doing now that's holding me back? You know, why am I not crossing the starting line? If I'm not me, I think I have. I think I've crossed the starting line. I took the leap of faith, and um, moving forward, I don't feel like I'm stuck. It's a nice place. It is. It's nice to no longer be stuck, whether it's my fault or somebody else's. Because yes, sometimes it is the environment. Um, sometimes it is constraints put on by others. I get that. And but it's still that feeling isn't there, that frustration isn't there. Things are moving forward, and that's the important part. Just get moving. Mm -hmm. Get out of the ready position. Get into set. Now go. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for being here. I'm going to close out the recording and then keep the room open. If anybody else wants to join us, you want to continue the conversation. Thanks for being on the live stream with me. Those in the comment section, terrific comments. I appreciate that. Those watching the replay, thanks for hanging with us this long. It's good to have you with me. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Let's move forward with the day on purpose with purpose to grow our hearts, grow our minds, and grow our businesses. Until next time, have a great day.